So is this what you do for the for the worm bar? You just yep. grab one of these right here? Grab bag, and then fill it up. I imagine it's by weight. Yeah. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Check us out. Today we're at this little hidden gym. I think we found a diamond in the rough. We are at Lake Pro Tackle. We just drove by this tackle store as we're cruising off the side of the highway. They've got some high dollar reels. They've got some brand new baits y'all have probably never seen. Some true off the wall stuff I want y'all to take a look at. We're gonna grab a few baits for you guys and go catch some bass on some stuff that we have never thrown on the channel. I'll see you inside. They've got a tank full of gar, they told us. Man, so check it out. They got some custom swim baits out here. This is absolutely ridiculous. Look at this guy right here. $124 glide bait. Not necessarily looking to break the bank today on the big old swim baits, but hey, they've got them here. Check this out. It's rare that you go into a store and actually see like something like a Metanium DC like on the shelves. This place has got everything and then some. They've got the big swim bait reel all my buddies love right here, the Calcutta Conquest. Can you believe this? They got a 200 size in stock ready to rock. So I'm thrilled to show y'all some of the baits here that they've got in stock that you don't see at just the average tackle shop. I already noticed a few things. When have you ever seen a size 60 Whopper plopper. This thing's like the size of a quarter, man. We're gonna have to throw this on a spinning rod and reel. $9.99, I think we have to grab it, man. This is insane. I, I wonder if we could get like a five pounder to blow up on this. That would be absolutely ridiculous. Gonna have to try and make it happen. Oh, and we got a good bass. This is definitely my favorite color. Probably the first color I ever picked up when throwing a Whopper plopper. Much larger size, but hey, they got the 60. I think we got to give it a whirl. Check out the hard swim bait selection too, y'all. Check this out. They got the big size Jackal Gantrell. I rarely throw it. I kind of prefer just the standard or the junior, you might call it, because it tends to get a lot of bites. In fact, they've got it right here. Look at this. And like a gold bass pattern. They've also got the S waiver and the size that I haven't been able to find at Carl's. I've been looking for the bigger one, man. This is the two hundo. I feel like we might need to get this, but it's 45 bucks. I'm trying to budget like 100 bucks or less today. So let's take a look around before we just decide we're gonna go all out on the S waiver. But I've been wanting to throw a bigger size. Let me know if y'all wanna see that. We definitely gotta grab one if so. But oh, like, we got the tour now, hold up. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> so one of the big things that like, a lot of those other brands don't have is pro crank baits. Number yes. one, rock crawlers. You cannot go wrong with these in the springtime, mm. summertime. Put off a little different wobble. People oh. just don't see them often. Okay. Stores don't carry them. Got it. A lot of people don't know about them. That's what today's video is all about is showcasing some different lures for the folks at home. Uh, oh, I'm trying I got to grab you. maybe like three to five or get to extend the budget maybe a little bit. I might have to grab a basket, but we're going to maybe, we might pick up one of these pro cranks. What else Free do you fire. got for us, man? Tactical looks, DD crank. Legit. These are legit. Matt Allen, guys at Tactical Bass and worked yep, a yep. lot on these. This is one of my favorite colors. I've caught tons already this summer really? on that guy that right looks there. Juicy. It's a little translucent, got that, that silver flash on it. That makes you want to skip out on the spro to grab this one right here. I, yep. think, I, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna, we're just gonna go ahead and put it, this in the basket. makes the basket? The, the basket that I don't have yet. We're <laughs> gonna makes. grab a basket, don't worry. Don't so this guy right here, by the way? No, but like I saw definitely. him at iCast last year and yeah. I talked a lot with the Shimano guys over at the Classic and over at um, some other events that I've gone to. All right, so in terms of like water stuff, different kinds of water, what are you fishing? Well, uh, it varies. Y'all know the deal. Could he, be, he goes could everywhere. Be, <laughs> could be clear, could be dirty, could be rocky, could be grassy, could be deep, could be shallow. So uh, does yep. that narrow it down? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty new to the store here. Berkeley just put these out a couple months ago. Yep. Uh, and we don't throw much Berkeley, so good showcasing some new stuff. Yeah. So these are the new finesse jigs and flipping jigs that they put out. They've yep. got a weird, they, they got a different silicone skirt to them. Okay. They're going to move a little bit more than your traditional skirt. So you take something like, you get a strands on here. Yeah. They're a little skinny. Your missile actually doesn't. Does a really good job about it but you take like a standard jig i mean they've mm -hmm. got real thick ish skirts these are actually built so they flow a little more look more like a fish swimming or a yep. crawfish just doing its thing just chilling out i like the idea of a little bandito bug on the back of this thing a little watermelon red it would just tie in nicely yeah do you contrasting from like a brown mm. to watermelon mm like half ounce uh, when you're talking about flipping jigs I like to go heavy because you're trying to get in you're trying to flip into the heavy cover right so uh, this is where the half ounce and above is what I like to use so we might grab that guy right there stunners stunners oh and Berkeley back to back this it's pretty new to the market yeah okay. I'm gonna say I'm just gonna be honest right I'm more excited to try out that Shimano with the little blade in there hey. we're definitely getting that one I like the stunner but we're gonna save him for the next 
next time we're in here or something. Y'all, let me know if you want to see the stunt I put to use. Did you go see the uh, plastics room? <gasps> Dude, we should definitely. Uh, there's a plastics room. There's a plastics room. There's a plastics room over in that other building. You've got a worm bar. It's got a ton of different plastics. You know, you can get lizards, swim yeah. baits, craws, crappie jigs worms literally everything so the it's basically bar. like a buffet okay for soft plastics i think we gotta so go, go take it we gotta go take a look at that for sure all right here it is this is so crazy yeah yeah, yeah. you've got all the mixtures of the scents from all the different makers or they're actually people pour these for us actually so these aren't actually any like big company these really are this is just pour. local stuff yep. yep local handmade goodness oh my Gosh. My Think. favorite. It's mm. like a brush hog, yep. except you can take off these pinchers, make it a craw. Okay. Oh, no way. Those. Yeah, yeah. So check this out, y'all. You yeah. can take off those back pinchers there he's talking about, and really you get a much more, uh, you get a shorter profile, and it does look like a craw. That's fantastic. Yeah. Two uses in one bait. How cool is this? <laughs> I've never seen anything like this in a tackle shop, man. This is too cool. Yeah. Look at that. That reminds me of Blue Baby. That's one of my oh, favorite colors. Yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. What, what does this go on that little finesse jig? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are these right here? So these these are just chunks. Okay. Um, these are I, I guess you could say old school. Okay. Uh, you know, you put them on the back of a jig. A lot of people thread them on. You know, okay. like a traditional plastic through the back. Yep. But old timers, I like to say old timers. I I still do this. You can stick that hook right through the meat of that, okay. and it swims perfectly. John Cox is a swims. great example of threading a chunk on through okay. the center. I gotta watch a couple chunk fishing videos because uh, I just I see a, a ball of plastic. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what but, I thought first too. But I got I gotta see it in action. Oh man. Okay, these are the latest and greatest. So y'all know Devin loves throwing the dark sleepers. I mean, just hands down, one of our one of our biggest confidence baits, right? This is my color right here. It's always tough to pronounce. I want to say it's called like Shoryu or something like that. Shoryu. What do we got? Shirao. We're just gonna call it Shirao. And then she throws a color that maybe is not on the shelf. She definitely likes that bass pattern. Here we go. She's been yep. she's been slaying them with this guy right here, which I would never probably buy. But she <laughs> she has instilled confidence in this red, gold, black, green color scheme. And now Mega Bass has done it again with the gill, which seems to be it might work through grass a little bit better. It's a little slimmer profile. So this is brand spanking new, ladies and gents. Three quarter ounce. We're gonna have to grab one of these. Y'all are selling out of these things. Yeah, literally we got six skews, six or seven skews in, and wow. there's only three different colors left. All the half ounces are gone. And uh, yeah, they literally were put up on the shelf last week. Sleeper gills, man, hot commodity around here. If you uh, haven't found them locally, you're gonna have to try online and get you some. And the mag drafts too, y'all got a good selection. Yep. I love throwing around a good mag draft. That guy right there. That's the color. Absolutely money. This and then is... the freestyles an albino or whatever pearl that is for about yeah the you same literally price. get two mag draft freestyles for the same price so like you said there's multiple different ways you could rig that thing up as opposed to the one that comes pre-rigged with that treble hook on the bottom the kind of the gold standard you could call it i did want to almost grab one you know in that nice bite-sized i believe this is the six inch but i didn't want to just get a standard color that'd be too easy right you know we, we love the shad colors right here too easy i think today we're going to do something totally different so check this guy out this color i believe it's just is it MSS? It doesn't even necessarily have a full on name, but uh, it's like blue. It's like a pro blue and it's got a little chartreuse in there. I wanna try and catch a fish on this for y'all, so I'm adding this to the basket. Oh, fish, fish. Five and a half pounds. How have I never fished here? So is this what you do for the for the worm bar? You just yep. grab one of these right here? Grab bag, and then fill it up. I imagine it's by weight. Yeah. Let's grab us a little worm bar grab bag real quick. Man, tell me what y'all would get. Look at all these. Look at, look at the flashy pink, chartreuse tip. You got the greens, the naturals. Man, there's just too many options. I'm telling you, we're gonna have to grab almost one of everything. There's that basket we've been looking for. Papa's worm bar. All right, y'all, so let's just start things off. We're gonna grab a little pink. Watermelon red flake. This looks like it'd be another shaky head worm right here. A Whee! Nico rig. Throw it on a Nico rig, right? So then you add a little weight to the front. You can even toss this thing on the windy days. We can even talk about that as we showcase it on the water. Any Let's unique see. patterns or anything that you... Yeah, what do you, what do you what, recommend? Like what's, what's most popular? For people coming in here, they mainly grab a bunch of swim baits because we're so close to Texoma. Throw mm. them on A rigs. You mm. know, I mean, we've got so many different styles of swim baits. You know, some more like skinny dippers, some more like the Zoom uh, swimmers. And then we've got flukes for days. Wait a second. 
Who came up with a Guggen Green Fluke and didn't tell me, man? Okay, we're, we're getting two of them. One for me, one for Devin. We're going to see who catches one on that first for sure. Look at these worms right here, these big, like, ribbon tail. Look at that dude right there. I'm getting a couple of these in various colors. I want to try and catch a Mondo. Oh, you got to get the trophy right hunter right yes, here. Yes, please. Right there. Oh, my goodness. This is almost like a June bug on one side and then a natural green on the other. Just got enough flash. To bring in the big bass. We're throwing those out yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> These lizards are actually going hot off the shelves right now. Okay. I mean, that, that just looks like a pretty standard zoom lizard. Yeah, I think we're gonna grab a couple of these bad boys right here. I think we might do a little Guggen lizard versus the custom lizard. Check us out. Tough to go wrong with that right there. Whoa. Nice. Yeah, they're like ring fry, Whoa. but they have a little curly tail, so. And how are folks rigging this up? Just a little Texas Trigger and Ned Rig. Texas that's, Rig that's or been... Ned. Dude, I can yep. see the Ned Rig going ham as long as you're in a spot that can throw it without, you know, getting caught on all the grass and whatnot. Look at this color. Look at, look oh, at, look this. at this. You color. like this one? That one's crazy. She's always going for those funky colors. Look, it's orange, green. It's like chartreuse. Let's grab a couple of them. Heck I, yeah. I want to catch one on this thing right here, so I want to make sure if we're burning through them, that we can link up with at least one. There's another. I mean, this one's pretty legit. That's quite sweet. It's I think. Added to the back, let's please. put that one in there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think we got to go with one of those hogs that you mentioned yep. is so versatile and can almost Whoa. be cut down to a crawl. Yeah, check that guy out right there. And Great this is just trailer. more of your like standard green pumpkin. So this is, uh, yep. you can't go wrong. And clear water for sure. You get into some more stained water, you might have to go with, you know, that's when you start throwing those darker black and blue June bug type Heck of colors. Yeah. But I'm thinking we're gonna toss a couple of these in here right quick. Just gold standard. So many folks are throwing those brush hog style baits. We might even get a little, yeah, we might even grab a little funky color like this right here. A little lavender in there. Check that puppy out. These are kind of crazy. What the heck? It's a crawl. <laughs> what on <laughs> earth is going on here? Crawl. We're putting him on a hook and catching a fish with it. <laughs> We've grabbed so many baits, y'all. We're at 99 cents per ounce. I think we have filled this bag to the brim. We're going to add maybe one or two more things, and uh, we got to get out and try and catch some fish on all this stuff. I'm so excited. Let's go ahead and wrap it up with a couple more for the bag. The look of them, the little curly tail. Oh, yeah. The jointed body. I assume it's got mega action. <sighs> all right. breaking the bank wow we are really going hard i mean that might be 80 cents the benefit here though at the worm bar is that you can try a little bit of everything and you don't have to spend the five six ten bucks on a bag of plastics just to only use a couple of them and decide you do or do not like it we're finding our confidence baits on the cheap today ladies and gents thanks to lake pro tackle well, we've seen the store just cruising off the highway and never never stopped in i was like mm -hmm. check this place out it's legit man yeah. i don't know why this thing ain't working uh it's new it's, it's new <laughs> It's new. <laughs> it's new. I don't have a code yet. <laughs> there we go. All right, y'all. We just got checked out. I just want to give a huge shout out to Sam, man. We've uh, we've linked up in the past, and uh, we need to do some fishing oh, together. Oh, for sure, for sure. But Mega Profs on the tour today. We learned a lot. We've seen a lot of new things, and we got some awesome stuff to throw for you guys. So. Let us know if you want to see us come back and maybe get a little rod and reel from this spot right here because yeah. they have such a wide variety. Otherwise, we're going to get out to the water and hope to catch some big ones on these, man. For sure. Good luck. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Until next time. Have a good day. You too. Yes, sir. Y'all know you got some big fish in here, too. But you can't fish. You can't fish? Sure. I can't until security says so, right? I didn't see you. Okay, I thank you so much, man. You My favorite. You understand this time. Bro, I appreciate it. <laughs> Here we go, y'all. We're finally getting a chance to break this stuff out. I'm pumped. All right, y'all. We're out here with the tackle from Lake Pro Tackle Shop. Just hit a pond I haven't fished in months, and I'm thinking about just going big. This is the first overcast day in Texas in, like, months, man. It feels like the summer has only been 100-plus degree. Like, feels like temps of 110. I'm thinking these fish might be on the move today. With the cloudy skies, it gets them fired up to go out and uh, eat a bunch of small fish, right? And so that's exactly what I plan on starting off with. I'm just curious if I can get a bite on this because they might not be as amped up as I'm thinking. And if that's the case, we're gonna slow it down and throw some of those soft plastics that we picked up from that buffet. This is gonna be the starting pond for the evening. We got a lot of baits to try and catch fish on tonight. We're hoping for one big one or maybe like, you know, five just decent fish out here, fishing the ponds, throwing it back. But the mag draft, this is the big fish getter right here. If the hypothesis is correct, the big fish are biting tonight. And if not, 
I'm gonna get completely skunked because this thing really attracts the bigs and kind of deters the little ones that might bite other things in our tackle box. This line feels kind of uh, lackluster. I don't know what we have on this go-to rod. I, I hope it's more than 10. This is, hopefully this is 15 pound fluorocarbon, right? I want at least that throwing this bait because there's gonna be some big fish hit it. But of course I can kind of play them out a little bit by loosening the drag just a hair or throwing a treble hook. So this is something that's almost mandatory. Otherwise I've found like, so there's magnets inside of this bait, everybody, if, you, if you're unaware. So this hook should stay inside of the slot right here, right? And you should just be catching fish, right? Well, you cast this thing and it just falls right out. It's pretty lame for being purpose built in that way and not working. So what you've got to do is essentially bend one of these hooks out um, and hopefully it doesn't break. Hopefully you don't stab yourself, all these things, right? But essentially what I want to do is bend one of those three treble hooks, not at a 90 degree, but you know, pretty bent out as you can see here. So now I'm just gonna stab the bait essentially in the plastic, okay? With that vertical piece, that thing is locked in. It's essentially just going right up into the plastic. The barb is still good. I learned this from, from Chris Saldane, by the way. He's always throwing these back in the, his mega bass days, right? So that is critical, absolutely critical. So that hook doesn't pop out of there despite the fact that there's a magnet. So now that thing is rigged and ready. And without further delay, bait's looking good. I didn't even check my drag. I might be in trouble if a big fish hits this right now. Nice little shimmy, good tail wobble. Uh, let me check that drag. Yeah, it was pretty loose. That's, uh, I don't want to break this bait off, but that should be better. We'll see what happens. This bait is a little heavy for the rod, if we're being honest. I don't know if it's rated to throw baits this uh, heavy, but you can be kind of smooth with that cast, kind of elegant with it, and you can make it happen without breaking. Without breaking nothing. It's not like those ratings are just like, oh, hard ratings. Oh, it's a good one. Guys, we got a fish on already. I can't even break this thing down before catching one. Yes, that's what we want. We're catching a big one tonight. This is just the start. This is just the start. Wow, under two pounds, not even a big fish, but on the mag draft, made it happen so quickly. Get out of here. We're gonna let this thing go. I think there's gonna be a lot of fish caught right now, folks. Got us one. I'm just gonna let them go. There's a bunch of them right there. Dang, y'all feeding them? Yeah. Wait a minute, don't do that yet. <laughs> I gotta catch them. See ya, bud. <laughs> yeah, I'm just filming videos, showing people how to use this bait. Nothing crazy. Man, are those big fish or little fish? Big? That's like cheating though. I wouldn't get any credit for that. <laughs> That's funny. All right, let's see if we can get some more. Dude, that is a giant. That's a giant. Those fish are huge. He's coming over. They might eat it. Are those catfish or carp? I feel like they're just not hungry now and they're waiting on more pebbles. It's gonna make it harder for me to catch them, to be honest. I should probably go to the other side of the lake. They have slowed down on the mag draft. I'm gonna switch it up. First buffet bait, y'all. This is that first one from the all you can grab buffet. Maybe they are indeed wanting something down low. I'm gonna try and cast out a little further where hopefully the sun doesn't get down as far and maybe the uh, the grass isn't as thick if there is any grass on the bottom. That's gonna be the, the goal. Oh, had a bite. He's on. There we go. Got us one. Feels pretty heavy. Solid on the Ned Rig worm. All right, there we go. Oh, perfect. That's all we need. We got him. Landed. Oh, you gonna be all right? All right, good. So as I'm working this, I wanted to have a real natural fall. So after I pop the rod a few times, what I'm doing is I'm just dropping it right back down to the water surface. That way all that slack can allow that bait to fall straight down. So if I were to just pop the rod a few times and leave it up like this, there's not really any slack. So that worm is kind of falling at an angle. Those fish, uh, they'll, they'll still hit it. I just want as natural as possible, right? I would rather it fall straight down. So that's the goal there. Get that curly tail just kind of working on the descent. And uh, it feels like I've got some grass or something on here. Maybe not. Yeah, there's a little something. You get used to the way a bait feels as it falls and as you're working it. And then you can usually tell if you've got some grass on there or a little twig or anything of that nature. That might have been a bite. Fish on. He was down low. They tend to be over here to the left now, it seems like. Please tell mom or big brother. We're trying to get something a little bit bigger. Safe to say I got my money's worth out of this bait. It uh, stands up to a tree. <laughs> stands up to two fish on the hook so far and that tail is still intact we might have found the cheapest tackle in df dub but this is not typically a color i throw by the way the pinks i just figure you know it's a darker color it's got that purple i've been i've been throwing a lot of purples but this one's like pink okay it's got that darker side though which is good I, just that darker outline i feel confident with that just a darker color in this murky water so I figured I'd be getting some hits and I'm just waiting to see that line move. That's the that's the benefit of like a high vis yellow braid. You can see that line move and you almost know you have a fish on even if you didn't feel it, okay? Cause you see it swimming and now it just tightened up. I might have a fish on. No, I don't. 
So you look at that line and if you see that line moving to the left or to the right, <laughs> there's a fish on. And with this small exposed hook, you really don't even have to set the hook. It often penetrates that lip without any even force. So you just kind of lean into it. Usually even when they grab it, they hook themselves. So you don't have to really fight for that hook set like you might with some other baits. Oh, got him. Oh, little fish, I felt some different head shakes. All right, we're finding some down low. It's getting pretty torn up, but it's still managing to stay fairly straight here. As soon as that tail gets bitten off, which, you know, sometimes the first bite you get takes it off, sometimes you catch 10 fish on the worm or more. But well, as soon as that tail comes off, I'm switching to another plastic. Gotta have that little bit of action. Let's skip over here. Let's kind of, uh, let's send one out here by the uh, aerator. We did catch that one mag draft fish out by the aerator. I've seen a couple fish hitting the surface. So whether it's bass or not, who knows, but let me just send one over yonder and let it fall. See if we get a fish out there in the middle. Now I either got a fish right off the bat. Yep. Or I just hit the bottom really quickly. I was kind of wondering, I, I, I let that fish have it for a minute. Cause I was like, I felt the tap and I thought I just hit the bottom. <laughs> that was the, I think that might've been the first cat out. Oh, well, okay, so we understand we, we caught the fish, but I think that might have been the first fish, uh, first cast over this direction since tying this worm on. I don't even remember if I sent one over here when I first tied it on or if I went straight to that other corner, but fish on and the little worm is just pulling through. Now this one's not coming to the surface, so this could actually be a big one that starts pulling pretty good here in a second, or it's a little one that just has some fight and turns out it's a decent one. So kind of smack dab in the middle. All righty, bud. Thank you for that Instagram story. Am I an employee? No, sir. Any of them? You know anywhere around here? Or no? That, <laughs> that's all right. I'll get out of here. We're gonna try and find us somewhere else. Okay, so here we are at spot number two. There's no fish in at this spot. I've been, I've been cruising around the city. I've been getting kicked out. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. There's, there's not many places around here, huh? Not many. Okay. It's actually a private property. That's the only reason I have to tell you. Well, that, that's fair. I didn't know if there was no fish in here or not. So I'm like. <laughs> I think there is a lake close to us. Yes. Um, maybe if you're going towards like Little Lounge, Frisco. Okay. Fishing I'll... is definitely allowed over there. All right, well, I'm going to try and hunt it down. <laughs> Appreciate you. You too. Thank you. Grassy and shallow. The Ned Rig is not going to have fun here. There's a bed. That's a monster bluegill. I mean a monster. That's like a two-pound sunfish. This thing would probably eat the worm. Yeah, he's not interested, but that was a huge sunfish. Let me check fish brain. I don't know if there's fish in here. Dang, this place only has like two catches. Logged in 2017. This might not even be that pressured. Caught two and six casts at this spot before I was rained off, ran off. So fish here at your own risk. I don't see the risk. There's no gates coming in here. There's no signs. I'm gonna just like swim the worm. This could work out pretty well, actually. Kind of enjoying fishing the new spinning gear, by the way, too. Prototype stuff right here. Oh, golly, we just got hit. Monstrous homes at the top of these hills. Oh, and we got a good bass. I've never fished here, and this is like a three pounder. Oh, that's what we wanted to catch, guys. This is exactly what we wanted. Oh my gosh. Lake Pro Tackle coming in with the hookup. Can I even get this thing up here? Oh my gosh, that's a heavy city bass. Wow. Did you see that? How have I never fished here? This place is crazy. Let's go. Okay. Oh, wow. You moved. He was over there on that island. He's like, this is my lake. No wonder the kid said he was ran off. It wasn't by security. It was by the swan. It's his lake. Holy smokes. Basically, I've made this whole video's worth of catches on like five cents or whatever this is. Like five cents has essentially caught every fish in this video. This is literally like fishing for under a dollar if we didn't throw the mag draft today. Second, so I'm just gonna cast right there. Oh, got him, got him. Oh my gosh, it's a sunfish. That is a monster right here. Oh, see ya, buddy. This is where you wanna come out with the glide bait and just creep it right over this grass. Holy smokes, you'd be catching tanks if there's any in here. Oh, wow, we just got hit. Fish, fish, fish. Oh my gosh, my GoPro cable is around the handle. This is probably one of the bigger fish. Oh no. That's a bummer, y'all. I mean, with a handful of casts, I've gotten this bait all the way around this pond in the deepest areas around the center. I've been in front of every bass's eyes in the place with how clear it is. And that was the big one. That, that was probably the biggest in this place. He had the ambition to go after it. 
And so I don't think we're gonna get another shot here, unfortunately. So I'm gonna take the hour and a half of daylight we have left and I'm gonna make a big move. There's a pond I know of about an hour from here and we had some luck on top water in the past and so I'm gonna head that direction in the car. I'm gonna load everything up and we're gonna close out the night with that little whopper plopper and I wouldn't be surprised if we catch a five plus pounder on that little whopper plopper. Stay tuned because I think the biggest fish of the video is coming to y'all right before sunset on the whopper plopper. So let's go ahead and make this long drive because I'm I'm over this spot now. Let me see if like the action is good here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's perfect. All right, let's try and close it out strong. Baby plopper. Ooh. First blow up. I don't know how that fish did not get hooked. Oh my God. <sighs> and everything misses this. Why are they short striking it? It's so small. Nothing could have prepared me for how slow this sunset bite was gonna be. I've been throwing this thing for half an hour to 45 minutes. We're past sunset, basically. Look at how far down this place is, by the way. This is normally in the water. Bass probably hanging out right next to it. Like, it's easily two feet down. These fish should be hidden. We haven't given up just yet. Normally, you can't really walk along this dam because the grass is so thick, but the water is so far down. I think I can walk all the way along the dam, just down here on the bank with my flip-flops. Let me get back to throwing this thing. Oh, there goes blow up number six, I think. I'm kind of over even caring at this point. It's like, I don't think fish can eat this. There's an invisible force field around this whopper plopper that allows it to never get eaten. This is prime top water time, ladies and gents. Oh, oh my gosh. When has a whopper plopper sucked this much? I'll probably catch a giant right as there's like not enough light for y'all to even see it on the GoPro screen anymore. Okay, so I'm literally not BSing you when I say I walked from like a little bit further down there, right? I was making my way this way to this point right here and I had a blow up that actually hit. I just have to explain this to y'all because I brought this thing in the fight of my life and the GoPro was not recording. Probably the most irritating thing as a fishing YouTuber. This is like a five to six pounder. I can't even like break this down for y'all right now. The, this fish hit, it starts screaming drag and it, it, it fights like a saltwater fish, essentially. And I'm like, I need to tighten the drag up a little bit. So I do, okay? I tighten the drag up and it's still taking drag and it's not head shaking. It's just dogging, okay? So at this point, so at this point, I'm just convinced I've got a catfish, okay? I don't see it for like 30 seconds and it continues to scream drag off of the Guggen reel. It finally, I finally take a look at this fish and realize it's a bass. It like had swam from over here way out deep. I finally, I start fighting it. I start heaving it like a catfish. It ends up over here and I see it's a bass. And I'm telling you guys on camera, like this could be like a PB bass. Like this is insane. It's not, but it's, it's, it's not my biggest ever, but this is a big fish. So this fish has been back in the water for a minute, flapping its wings, feeling good. I'm gonna put it on the scale real quick, but uh, this has probably turned in to be my worst favorite experience filming a youtube video in like the last year because of the because we missed the fight on this fish that was uh, you would not believe how irritated i was about two minutes ago before y'all started watching this right here like five and a half pounds and i'm hardly even excited because of how that just went down that sucks man crazy fight I got so lucky. Screaming drag. I'm just irritated right now. Gonna let you go, buddy. I know you're upside down. I got you. I know. Jeez. I don't wish that on any fishing YouTuber at all, okay? Gotta get your clips. That was the highlight of the video. That was the whole reason to watch till the end and you missed the fight. Can't even reenact it. And I'm not BSing, like there's no point in it. That thing was scream and drag, that was insane. Anyways, if you've made it this far, <laughs> consider dropping a like button for the effort on this one. Hitting that subscribe button if you like the fishing videos and watching whatever is left in the video if we catch one more fish. Let's, uh, let's give it a shot.